and then training on and fine tuning models on this platform specifically. There's a lot of nuances to it and uh, a lot of gotchas and it, and it could be hard overall. So you're looking at my screen overall and this is one account where I'm fine tuning a model, right? And I'm fine tuning, I've been fine tuning a few different models on this account, but what you'll see is a lot of failures, right? Like uh, multiple failures and then some succeeds. Uh, and then the failures are like, every single part of uh, this has to be set up exactly in, in certain ways. And that's kind of what I'll go into and try to like reinforce within this video is um, the importance, the important elements to me overall with this process are the data formatting uh, and then like getting every single uh, service, wh whether you're using like uh, Vertex AI or Azure or AWS or OpenAI or whatever, they're all going to have their own individual ways that they, exact ways that they want you to, f to format these file names, right? And then like, you'll get into, this is where I'm at right now with some, with these failures is like the exact formatting of the file name has to be exact. And then you can trace it through and I'll show you um, as you go through, kind of like I, I wanna show you the, the my goal here is to show you like the ins and outs, just like save you money if you are trying to train on Vertex AI specifically in this instance, um, because it's not free, right? All of these failures aren't free. So learn from my mistakes uh, and go through and, and save yourself a little bit of money <laughs> as we go through this. So going through, the big thing to highlight is, first of all, uh, how, how do you get here, right? Because like for me, as I'm going through this platform, the very first thing that I stumbled upon and like it, it was hard for me to, to get in is like, okay, how exactly do I exactly tune the model? Uh, within this Vertex AI platform, within like all of this that we're looking at here on this left-hand side, right? So you get to Vertex AI uh, from Google Cloud, and then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, you start off on the dashboard here, and then it's like, okay, well, how, how exactly do I get like anywhere from here, right? From, from this dashboard that we're looking at here, and it hopefully is loading for you now. Uh, and then, I'm sorry, my computer's got a lot open here because I've got a lot running, right? So it, it's, a, and I've been doing a lot. So it, it's kind of CPU and, G, and uh, RAM intensive at the moment. But so going through on the left-hand side, you're going to want to go to language. So out of all of these, like Model Garden seems like a good one. And you can go there and you can get to it from Model Garden. But very specifically, we're going to want to go to language um, in this instance. And then so when like, cause it's just the easiest over, I'm giving, giving you the easiest path. So go language uh, and then create a new prompt and then explore more. Uh, and then within this explore more, you've got tune a model and then new tuned model, right? So just real simple language, go down. Uh, you can go here. There's other ways that you can hit this, but just <laughs> real simple, real easy tuned model, new tuned model. That's all you need to do, right? Uh, and then so if you get lost, and then confused language, that home screen, new tune model. Boom, there you go. And then so uh, next thing that's gonna get confusing is when we're looking at this, right? There's a whole, like these options and there's a whole bunch of options and there's a gotcha here. And then like uh, Google does this, right? So <laughs> let's go in depth into this. Uh, so very first thing to, to separate is you've got supervised tuning and then this reinforcement learning from human feedback. And they say it's in preview mode. Uh, I haven't utilized the RLHF, so I don't know if it's in preview mode, but with my previous experiences, with Vertex AI, when it says that it's in preview mode like this, it's gonna allow you to set it up and it's not gonna work. So that's why I haven't touched it overall, just being honest, but, uh, cause it's not, if it's, if they're flat out saying like preview, um, it's a preview, like that's how Vertex AI works, right? Like, and, and it will let you set it up and then it's gonna be like, oh, it's a preview mode, welcome to like preview. Uh, and then you're training, when you train it, it's gonna say it's like, like, um, from a, like a Back to the Future date, it's like February 2nd, 1969 or something like that. <laughs> the Back to the Future date, but it, it says it's that. Um, and then that, that's what it is. Uh, but so we go through supervised tuning is so in this instance, what I always choose then, and then you can name it whatever you like, that doesn't matter. And then these models are important, right? So let's talk about the models here and then the base models. Uh, so the default that it's gonna default to is text bison. 
Uh, and then so you've got text bison, code bison, and a chat bison, essentially. Uh, and then you've got O1 and O2 versions of these. Um, and then so just very clearly up front, let's talk about the O1, O2 first. So O2 is the newer version <laughs> up front, right? And then they don't make this clear. There's not a lot, like, this is one of the things I don't like about the, the Google platform and, and training these models on this Google platform is like, I mean, for Google and for being a big company, there's not a lot of documentation. So that's probably why you're watching this video, right? But so the making it very clear to you O2 is what you want if you want the, the newer models and the ones that aren't going to be discontinued. These O1 models, if you look at the documentation, they're going to be discontinued by, I think it's like June 2024. So uh, as long as you're watching this video before then, you're good, but like you're you're running into, like the, it's going to be sunsetted, these these O1 models. But the O2 models, there's no sunset date for them as of the making of, these vid of this video. Uh, and then um, so then that brings us into the different versions, the text bison, the code bison, and the chat bison. I, I assume that code bison is pretty straightforward, right? But so the big thing to keep in mind is that the way that you format the data sets is different for all of these models, but it's a code, the way that you format the data set for code bison and chat bison, chat bison are pretty much the same, but they're very different than the way that you want to format the data set for text bison. So starting off with text bison, that one's very easy to format the data for. Um, essentially, you just want to format it in prompt response pairs. Um, and I can give you an example of that. Um, here we go. Like this is a one that I have up already on my screen. Uh, and then so this is just, let me go to the top here. Uh, and then you can see input text and output text. And then I want to highlight this very specifically, right? And then, cause it's prompt response pairs. And then some some systems and a lot of systems will have it as like prompt response or input output, something like that. Um, very, very specifically with the uh, Google and the Vertex AI platform, you want input underscore text and output underscore text. Like it has to be this or else it'll error. Um, and then from there, you've got your input text and your output text. And then this is just prompt responses, right? And I can give you some English here. Let me go down <laughs> somewhere, sorry. Uh, this is a unique data set. But so yeah, you can see uh, lots of English here, you know, so it starts getting into to, uh, what would actually be kind of readable for most people, I assume. Um, and then, um, but so going through just simple data set, right? But so when we're talking uh, the, uh, when we're talking about um, the for um, chat as opposed to text, then it's completely different than this. And then so let's talk about first what uh, you can and cannot do with uh, text bison, right? So uh, text bison, uh, it's they, this is not, <laughs> they, they, they don't fully uh, explain, right? So text bison is very specifically for specific tasks, for like prediction, for sentiment analysis, for like anything that's like prediction based, right? That's what it is. That's what it's essentially doing is it's, you're essentially training it to predict based off of these prompt and response pairs. And then so it's gonna be the model, the resultant model that you're gonna get, it's gonna be very bad at holding a conversation. Like it's not gonna be built for holding a conversation. And then, so you can train this model and then you can play around with it in the platform and you can train it in the platform. And then within the platform itself, it's gonna operate okay as a um, uh, chat model. Like, and it's gonna be, you're gonna be like, yeah, there's something a little bit off with this though. Um, and then when you go to like inference host it and you do all that to be way off. And then that's gonna be because of the fact that you're, it, it's text bison, right? So like, uh, if you want it to be a chat model, don't go with text bison. You want to go with chat bison very specifically. And then when you go with chat bison very specifically, that's where you're going to run into a lot of the, the errors, right? And that's what I'm running into. Uh, and, and what I've been, like the errors that I've been running into here. Uh, and then, so when you go through this and then even the, the Google's documentation, that they'll put their documentation and they say like, this is the exact format that you should be utilizing. Uh, and then they give you a few examples. Uh, and then I put it in, in, in the exact format that they say to, to put it in. And it's still like massive issues that are like, I, I still have failures. And then so here we go again, right? Like I started this video and I was like, ah, it's because it takes about the, the problem with these failures too, right? Is that it takes um, about like uh, seven to 10 minutes uh, before you know that it even failed. So. Let's go through uh, on this latest failure uh, and then let's see exactly why it failed this latest time. And then so I'll show you uh, what you want to do 
when it fails, right? So we can see uh, we go through and it failed. And then so at this point, it failed on the tuning graph. Uh, and then we want to go to reveal node. <laughs> through this a lot, right? So I kind of know uh, exactly how to trace errors now at this point uh, pretty efficiently. So we'll go to the reveal node here. And we'll click on this. Uh, and then we're going to see that it failed in the encoding. Uh, see data set encoder. Uh, and then let's go to, uh, let's just click on this. Please check the logs, and then it's giving us like the exact log. And then we're going to click here, and then we're going to go through, and then it's going to error because it's going to give me into the wrong account. So give me one second to fix that. Again, I've been through this a lot of times, so <laughs> I know exactly what it's going to do uh, and uh, what it's going to error on. And I don't know what it's going to error on in this instance because I fixed the error before. So let's see. Um, let's go through. Gonna just take forever to load, but once it loads, then we'll it'll tell us exactly why it failed, right? Which is exactly why we want to go through the logs, uh, and then why I'm showing you the process of of like going through this. Like this is like you're gonna be shooting in the dark a lot if you don't do this, right? Uh, and then so where it's the specific failure failure here, the author, but I did this already. Okay. So it's saying, saying the author of each message needs to be from the user. Needs to be from user or assistant. Currently we get, uh, uh, see, okay. So uh, like this is a very good error to point out, right? So like, and, and I've run into this error with other data sets before. Uh, and then, so look at this. So the author of each message needs to be from uh, underscore like flat out like uh, all lowercase user or all lowercase assistant and then currently they're getting I messed up and I, my bad and I put it as uppercase assistant as opposed to lowercase assistant and then that's what's erring and then so like that's huge right just pointing out like this is like I, it's massive one this is why you go to the logs right because you could be tr like you're going to be shooting in the dark all day long until you figure that out right just go through the log okay there it is <laughs> like oh my god but okay that's our error and then so that's easy to fix i'll fix that after this video and then we should be good, right? That's <laughs> hopefully, but maybe I'll get more errors, right? Because that's what, what's happened before, but then I'll go through and I'm starting to like, I, I think that there can't be much more. Uh, so, uh, but so I'll fix that after this, right? Uh, but so uh, let's actually, the first thing I'll do though is is um, set it up. So going back here, so again, I'll go back how I told you at the beginning, right? Let's just do it the simplest way. So language, tune a model, new tune model. Give it a name. This one is Anya Chat Bison 32K. And I'm going to call this test version because that's what it is at this point. Uh, and then, so very specifically, go into the drop down here Chat Bison 32K. And then, so the difference between the 32K context and the Chat Bison is, is that so total all in with the non 32K. You're gonna get 10k tokens. They don't tell you that, but that's what it is. It's 8,000 in, or it's like 8,000 out and like uh, 1,000. It's like 8,100 out and then like 1,900 in. So uh, it's like the cap or something like that. But so this in this instance, we're training on 32k. Giving you a directory, uh, and then you should probably follow better file structure than me. I wasn't expecting to have to do this so many times, just being honest. But so very, very important, and this is what I want to highlight on here and to make sure I touch this before ending the video because this is a Google thing, is so when you go through this model, right, and you, you go through this and they, they make it easy to set it up. Like this is fairly easy as far as fine tuning a model. Like it's, it's as WYSIWYG as you could make it, right? Um, but so they hide it and then so as you don't have to go through this step you could just click through and then not go through what i just clicked on which is the uh advanced options right and then you could just skip it entirely but you do not want to skip that advanced options because you want to look here very specifically right at the training steps specifically is what i'm going to point out in this instance uh and then so in this instance i'm setting it very so they're setting it to a thousand right um, and then so essentially like the best way that you you want to look at this is take your like 
number of rows, uh, and then like the you, if you want like three epochs, um, take your number of rows and then like divide it by sixty four, uh, like, uh, and then that's kind of how you can like weigh out how many training steps that you should have. Generally speaking, you're gonna have about sixty four rows per step, of about fifty to sixty rows per step, but sixty four is a good number. So. That, that's what I would go with overall. Um, and then, but so in this instance, I just want to make sure that this is working, right? And then, so I'm just setting it to a, to a low amount of training steps. Uh, but generally speaking, I'd, I'd set this maybe to like 100 uh, to 200 training steps, but definitely not 1,000, right? Like, so they're defaulting it to it. Like, you're going to eat through so much money if you just set that default, which is exactly what they want, right? Like, they just want you to default that. So I'm just pointing that out. Um, and then we're just going to continue here. Uh, and then I do have to manipulate this data set. Uh, but so I'll do that offline and then manipulate it. But just going through, I'll go browse, select the, the JSONL file, <laughs> and then just upload it, right? Uh, and then I, I will highlight. So, and, and I mentioned as the last thing in this video. So when I go through to manipulate this, I'm going to be uh, using very specifically a, uh, it's called Sublime Text. And then uh, it's just a free text editor. For, I'm using Mac. Uh, in this instance and then so if you s just save and text editor and you utilize text editor uh, you can't save it as a JSONL file and then so that's what I'm working with here that's what it needs is JSONL so then just the the very last tip here to highlight is uh, like Atom Text. There's other ones, free ones, right? Like there's a lot of free and open source ones. Uh, it's just the one that I'm using. Uh, but then, so just highlighting that like uh, there's multiple ones that are available, but you will want to use one that's not text edit, not the built-in text edit um, for, for Mac, but it, that's easy enough to get around. But so hopefully this video gives you uh, some hands-on like do's and don'ts and you've learned like to save a little bit of money and a lot of time. <laughs> so each, if you notice, each one of these failures, again, takes about like seven to 10 minutes for the failure, like before you know that it fails, right? And then that's without the time of setting it up and everything like that. So each, each failure is about like half an hour, like uh, just kill time, right? So uh, hopefully with this video, I've saved you more than half an hour and uh, at, at least a few dollars. Uh, at least I think the biggest tip is again advanced options and then change that default because man Google is setting it to a thousand that's kind of janky um, just leaving that there and if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you very much